This is Tony Roberts, and you're listening to WBAI in New York, the voice of truth since 1960. <laughs> oh, I love hearing that voice. If it's Sunday morning here in New York City, <laughs> and you hear that voice, welcome to Mass here, listeners, or I should say apostles. Uh, we have with us <laughs> St. Malachi, the patron saint of atheist. And Malachi, I, I, it was hard to avoid yesterday, but there was a horror show on uh, television. And I don't mean our daily mass shootings. I'm talking about the coronation. Well, Malachi, that just takes us right in to our guests that are coming up today, because we're going to have on Dr. Patrick Tracy, who just got in from Baghdad. He's back in, in Dublin, and he has a book out called The Needle and the Damage Done. He's a, an amazing uh, person. He's traveled the world. He's one of the most famous doctors in the world, the county uh, for Manor Man. And he will be coming on later. And then after him, Mick Malampy of the First Irish Origin Theater will be coming on about all the new things that are coming up that he's organizing with the, the theater organization. But Malachi, you know, when you were in England, you could go into a bar in London. I've been to London a few times. And you could say F Thatcher and no one pay attention. But if you said F the Queen or now said F the King, you, you wouldn't yeah. get out of the bar. I mean, you their attachment not. to royalty, it, it knows no bounds. They they love royalty over there. I, I, I can't understand. We used to have Tony Bend on, MP, on the show, and he refused to take, you know, any, any of the OBEs and all that stuff because he, he did disagreed with the whole concept of royalty, of you're being born into this family, and that means you're entitled to Westminster and you're entitled to a, a, everything else. So gallery... But uh, last Sunday, we had a great fundraiser with Marine veteran uh, Katie Bishop, who has a GI coffee shop on 9th Street in the Gowanus uh, area of Brooklyn. And I, I did part of my play off the meter there. But we had two people that opened for me was uh, Annie Lancelotto. And she talked about her father being in the Marines and fighting in Okinawa and the effect it had on him when he came back and, and what happened to the family. And also uh, David Gilney, the Irish playwright from Dublin, did part of his play about being hit by lightning in uh, South Boston. So, Malik, I'm going to play a little audio of David Gilney, who will be coming over now, bringing his play again back to New York. And when we come out of that, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Patrick Tracy, who, as they say, just got in from Baghdad into Dublin yeah. about his book, The Needle and the damage done, and how he was the actual doctor for Michael Jackson when he was in Ireland. So this is uh, David Gilney talking about what it was like to be struck by lightning. Um, I signed the film contract. I was working as a laborer in South Boston, and two hours later on L Street, I got struck by lightning. <laughs> True story, I know. Hollywood's a bitch. But um, I'm going to give you this excerpt. It's in L Street in Boston, and I was working as a laborer. So um, there was kids playing in the house next door. The smell of innocence and youth, chalk in your DNA, kiss chasing, imaginations one wild, a place before Wi-Fi. And there was a ladder on the balcony, and the ladder began to move. And I was fearful that the ladder might fall, because I was three floors up. And as I put my hands on the ladder, that's when my life froze in fear. My eardrums erupted with the sound of thunder. My eyes were being burnt out alive. 300,000 volts of electricity passed through my body and burnt the soles off my feet. I was flown backwards into the room and when I landed on the stripped wooden floors in that home in South Boston, my heart flatlined for the first time. The smell of your own burning flesh is a visceral memory that I can never shake from my subconscious. When I woke up, I could hear the kids screaming next door, shouting my name. And all of a sudden I hear the loud thundering boots of the lads I work with. Now the first two people to come to me on the building site were Anto and Mick. And we all know an Anto and Mick. They're not the sharpest tools in the box. <laughs> but their heart means well. Poor old Mick lit me a cigarette and I don't even smoke. And Anto ran across to the local liquor store and got six bottles of stout when I was bleeding out on the floor and lacerations throughout my body. But when the foreman, the gaffer, came up, he picked me up like Superman, 
and we jumped into a yellow taxi cab to the Boston Medical Center. It was like a vaudeville comedy of errors with Mick smoking, Anto drinking, and me bleeding out in the back of this taxi cab. I just thought I was on stage with Phil Linnan. Guess who just got back today? Them wild eyed boys that have been away. Haven't changed, have much to say. Well, I still think them cats are crazy. When we pulled up outside the Boston Medical Center and he pulled the handbrake, there's a moment when you know you're dancing between the realms of the life and the afterlife. I could feel this cold chill enter my spine and I knew I hadn't got much time in this place we call life. My best friend Stephen Russell came running to the hospital. I was an 18 year old man who never told his parents or anyone that he loved them. But I knew I was dying because I could feel that chill enter my spine. And I told my best friend to ring my parents until it's the morning time because I didn't want that guilt in my conscience with them living in a different country. I said, ring my godparents in Florida or my auntie and uncle in Canada first and then my heart flatlined for the second time. I felt a cold chill enter my spine. Whisper of serpents, mystical creatures skinning me alive with glee. My heart dripped in tar and I was alone, frightened of the darkness. Blood-stained memories. Every trace of love or life I had in my brain was being squeezed out. I could feel death's tight grass tightening around my neck, asking me to give up in this place we call life. <gasps> and that was David Gilney at Principal BK uh, GI Coffee House on 9th Street in the Gowanus section of Brooklyn. They'll be bringing that play over. Uh, a bolt out of the blue. And our guest now that, thank God, we have lined up, everything is working, is Dr. Patrick Tracy. And his book out is called The Needle and the Damage Done. Uh, I got to meet him at the Fitzpatrick Hotel a couple of weeks ago when he was in town for the art exhibition of the 50 Patties paintings. Well, it wasn't paintings. It was actually pictures that were in Persian Square and Grand Central. But uh, he just left Baghdad yesterday via Turkey into Dublin, and I'm looking at his Facebook book site, and, and uh, Patrick, I, I want you to comment on this. Dr. Patrick Tracy worked as a staff health doctor at Air Bitar Hospital in Baghdad during the Saddam Hussein reign in 1990. He was 